higher. I have a 5 inch aluminum tube that goes from the pro charger to the throttle body, and I was wondering if you would be interested in welding it together for me. I sure would. Thanks for sending it to me. Hopefully, this will make a good video. Okay, on this video, I'm going to talk you through my thoughts on all this. Let me know in the comments if you don't want all the ramble and blah, blah, blah. Just want to watch me weld it. But first off, this isn't ideal to not be welding this. The guy sent it from Ohio. It's for a drag race car. It's like a low seven second drag race car. And it's not ideal to be doing this type of work off site where you don't have the car there. But it looks like he fit it pretty dang good. The gaps are nice, you know, there's no gaps here. It's tight the whole way around. And then here's for the blow off valve. And this is good too. He hasn't drilled this hole out yet. And that'll minimize distortion when you're welding it. If there's a big gap in here, that can make it flex and contract more and distort the surface. And then one potential problem is I don't know how good these joints have been cleaned. And I can't break them apart because this is exactly how he needs it to fit. You know, there's very little margin for error. So we'll see how it goes. You put a lot of tacks around this to hold it in place good, but that's not ideal for me as a welder because it's nearly, it is impossible to get a nice pretty weld going around this whole thing, hitting every single one of these big humps. See how big those tacks are? And then each one of these trying to run over them, that is an increased chance for a pinhole leak every single time you gotta go over one of these. So the best way, you know, it's, it's not, not, the end of the world but he didn't know but the best thing to do would have been to tack this lightly in three spots on the outside when he had it all fit up on the car and then come back and put more weld in here on the inside and then once that's all done I can just light I could have just lightly filed off the three tacks on the outside made them nice and shallow and then just mowed right over, over them and you wouldn't have even been able to see them but this is what I got to work with okay time for the white paper towel test to see how clean these joints are Not too bad. You're gonna get a little bit of darkness coming off on bare raw aluminum like this anyways. Okay, so now I've got everything pinned down on the inside so I can grind all this off and make it so I can put a nice smooth weld around everything without having to bump up over these. Okay, so some quick advice about focal points. This goes on the car like this. So you want your weld stops to be under here and back here and down here so you don't see them on the finished product. And I've put a little weld on here to start with because you're not gonna see that. That's a little test weld to see how clean the part is and it's, I don't know, it's not the best, but let's see how good I can do on it. So that'll hold it in place so I can grind all this down. So I'm gonna go around and carefully file these down as low as I can without taking any more material off around the part. And if anybody ever tells you to not back drag an aluminum file, tell them to shut it. Because if you don't back drag it, sometimes it'll pull in all these pieces and just keep clogging. But if you keep it down and pull back like this, it'll free some of those up and they'll fall out better. See how clean that sounds? Okay, now watch this. Keep going with it a little bit. See how it's getting those, those hook points? It's 
packing all that back in. And you wouldn't want to just have this one weld here and start welding around because it would, you know, if these tacks weren't here, once I sand them down, because this would start growing a gap. But these tacks that he's put on here are pretty big and hot. And looking inside, it's hard to show you this, but you can see that they burned through real good. So there's a lot of thickness in there too. Once I do grind these down, I'm not worried about this popping apart or anything. And I get comments all the time. I just end up deleting them where people tell me to use like paraffin wax, candle wax, oils or whatever on my, all my cutting tools so they don't clog up with aluminum. But I do it dry. I do everything the way I do it for a reason. I've been doing this for 20 years. So the reason I don't put anything on here is because if there's wax on here, yeah, it's gonna keep it nice and clean and not clog up, but you're gonna be packing wax in your weld joint and you're not gonna be able to get it out. And then you're gonna have a filthy, ugly mess and be chasing an arc around and smoke's gonna be going everywhere and porosity. So yeah, doing stuff like this, just be patient and do it dry. One thing that sucks about welding over big craters too, check this one out that I filed down. See how there's that pinhole in it? So when you're welding over that, that'll pop up too and you'll have to fight that. I'm just trying to get them all filed down the best I can. A lot of porosity in that one too. Cool thing about welding around this with the without the inside cut out is this acts as a heat sink in here too so you can apply more heat and you don't have to worry nearly as much about burning away this thin tubing versus this thicker flange. This is probably about eighth. I'm guessing this is like 60 or 80 thou. And the way these pipes are formed, they're never actually a perfect circle when they're done, these elbows. So you end up getting a, you know, like a step on one side if you fit the other side good and that's going to make that more difficult to weld so what you can do is put them up in a vise with some soft jaws and squish them and just keep checking and try to get them as concentric the whole way around as possible before tacking them together because that top piece on the left over here is going to try to walk away from you that's turning out okay so this particular piece since i didn't fit it i'm not the strategy i'm using here i'm putting a little bit colder of a weld and humping, humping the thickness up on top and not burning deep into it because I don't want to pull out any impurities in here and you know blacken the weld any more than I have to or make it ugly. Not my finest work but turned out better than I thought it would going over those big wide tacks. And that one, that one turned out cleaner than I thought it would. This one's to all you machinists out there. When you get done cutting your parts, please clean all that oil and grime out of there so when we weld the part, it doesn't cook it and turn it all brown and discolored. And then we have to take the time to scrub it out with the Scotch-Brite pad. In the end, it's a lot easier for you machinists just to clean this out in the first place. Okay, thanks for watching. That turned out a lot nicer than I thought it was going to. Top one that had all the tacks didn't turn out quite as good, but not too bad. These are called Wigan style clamps. There's an O-ring in here, instead of like a V-band to make a seal. And if you just start welding around this and don't know what you're doing, you can screw this up pretty easy and get it out around. So for the website subscribers, I got a link below that shows you how I fixtured this up and welded it to make sure it was round. You know, you don't want to be screwing up an expensive part like this. And all the welding on this entire part was done with this Prime Weld 325. I've been really happy with this machine. I've got a discount code, 6061. If you order direct from the manufacturer, that'll save you a bit of money and help me out too. It's, just, it's the cheapest price you'll get anywhere. And uh, as always, I use the variable amperage TIG button that replaces a foot pedal. And I sell that on my website too. I'll put links below for all this stuff. Okay, quick ad time. I've got a $45 website, one-time subscription fee, unlimited viewing. That shows you exactly how I weld from my point of view. Like you're looking right through my welding hood. Here, I'll run you through the main page of the website real quick. 
So first off, I show an overhead panoramic view of all my machinery that I use with part numbers on it. And then we got torch set up. I show you exactly what parts I use and how I shape my tungsten and why. Get you started off there, right? That's very important to get that right so you don't fight it. Basic welder settings, you know, gas flow rates and everything, and then advanced welder settings if you have a more advanced welder. And then, you know, different frequency settings, factors that determine what TIG welder you should buy, you know, if you need a water cooler or not, how big of a welder, where to buy aluminum welding material online or your local stores, and then how to cut the material, 10 different tools that I use, how to properly clean it. I go into detail on that one. That one's a problem that a lot of people have. And then arc shots. I have high quality arc shots that show you exactly from my point of view what I'm doing. First off, we do weld puddles, and then what you know what happens if you accidentally touch your tunks, and which everybody does. You learn to minimize that. Welding exercise number two, we got beads with no filler rod to get your torch hand working the right way. And then I explain what filler rod selection, what type, oops, what type and size I use. Then we go to spot tax with filler rod. I stripe the rod so you can see how much I'm feeding in. And then exercises with the filler rod, how to get it looking like you weld like a machine. Butt welds, T welds, outside corner welds, like this one that we're doing right now in this video. And then how to master your weld restarts. A lot of people have problems with this too. Every single one of these little dips is a weld restart. So if you can get it looking like that, then your weld restarts come pretty mindless to you. That's very beneficial. And then I show you some out of position welding. TIG button that I sell is really good for this so you're not kicking around a foot pedal. And then I just have a bunch of build videos. Some of these are available on YouTube, free to view, but a lot of them I don't have on there anymore. You gotta be on the website to check them out. I'll scroll through all these, there's quite a few of them. Intake elbow, tubing, made a... Then I explain my little rotary position welder and how to calculate feed speeds for it to make your welds look pretty, depending on the diameter and what you're doing. Then I go into more detail on pulser settings. If you're doing, you know, like this looks like a machine did it, which I had a robot arm for this one just to illustrate the spacing and everything, the pulses and the high and the lows on it. Slingshot, Y pipe. How to shape tungsten really sharp for stainless welding. There's a trick to that too. And I show how to weld thin metal, like actual razor blades back here in the background, fixture those up. Stainless tube. And if you screw up a stainless weld, you can come back and touch it up. I show you how I do that. There's a fun beginner project, a water box. And then why I wear the gloves that I do, explain that. And then how to cut your tungsten into length. A lot of people do this wrong, and you'll end up cracking it and fighting it, and you won't realize it forever. And then the you know stacking dimes technique. I go into detail on how I feed the filler rod and how I move, the timing on everything. Some BMX seat posts, flask, aluminum merge collector, I made a flower pot out of that. Cowbell, blending your welds so you can't see them. Show you how I build this from scratch out of sheet metal. And then I uh, three-way joint, there's a template. I, I did a 3D modeling template so you can cut them out and wrap the paper around them and mark them before you weld them and fit them. And then this one's a good one, cast aluminum TIG repair with dye penetrant so you can see where the cracks are, how to clean it. Um, these elbows that I used to build a lot, I just put a camera right in front of me and showed you my whole process from start to finish, how I fit them and weld everything, what order, order of operations. Yeah, and like I said earlier, calculating rotary position speeds if you want to get really complicated with it and get it really perfect looking. A little small urn. Break off a dirt bike lever, show you how to weld that back up and shape it how you want. I like mine shorter, most ones most come long and that's why they break because they're too dang long. I just like to two finger them. Make them look like a mountain bike lever. Uh, stainless, how to get the minimum color build up if you're getting too hot out here. You don't start turning anything other than golds. Sometimes that matters. Show you a repair, on a, a repair on a plumber's drill. This is really thin tubing. Quick one on MIG welding with a small MIG welder. Clay pigeon thrower repair, pumpkin. And then these countersinks that I use all the time, a lot of these suck for aluminum. There's only one that's really good and I give you part numbers for those. And then how to isolate each hand and get perfect looking lap welds. And then I show the welder settings. A lot of people are curious about this. I show the welder settings 
the exact welder settings I used to get that weld beat on pop cans. And then there's just an image gallery of all the parts I built over the past you know 10, 15 years. Okay, enough for rambling. If you're interested, there it is, 6061.com. Thanks for watching.